We have you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for sharing with us. <laughs> okay. So again, Tammy, let's back up for those who missed. And we had so much good stuff too. <laughs> so I'll share the first part of this so Tammy, that. Let's back up. Oh, just a second. Those who missed, and we had so much good stuff, too. <laughs> okay, so. Can you hear me okay, Tammy? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, yeah, let's go ahead and back up. And uh, we were talking about the meaning of Sozo. We were talking about the woman at the well, or not the woman at the well, but the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about the Gadarene demoniac mm -hmm. and how sozo was the word that was used to describe what Jesus gave to them. Yes. Okay, yeah. so take it away. Yeah. Yeah, so where where it said that 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 he was the demonized man was made well there in Luke eight thirty six, um, it's translated to the Greek word sozo, so you know he was he was saved he was healed he was delivered he was, you know set free he he realized that you know he had, uh, provision and protection and power and authority, and that was his one story, and it was cool because our pastor was talking about this just Sunday you know so when. Jesus came back later to Decapolis. There was tens of thousands of people that were there. Where before, when he was there, <laughs> it was the demon possessed man who came to see him. But now, because of that one man's story of what Jesus did, it caused a whole crowd to come. Wow. And, um, and so that's just, you know, that's what Sozo means. But Sozo ministry is exactly that it's making sure that jesus gets everything that he paid for you know right. and that we get to live not just you know get a ticket to heaven because we have salvation but right. that you know he paid for our healing physically emotionally to be healed he paid for our deliverance so you know those those areas where we have partnered with a lie or we have unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment he he, he paid for us to be delivered from those things he paid to let us know that we are provided for and he is our provider and he is our protector and and he paid that me we may have power and authority you know just like it says in luke 10 19 behold i've given you power and authority over all the power of the enemy right so we're missing out on so much of christian life if we just settled for, oh, I'm saved and I'm good now, right? we're missing out on the abundance that, that Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. That's right. what he came to do. He came to give us that sozo, that completeness of what he paid for. Amen. Amen. And again, when that, the, 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 what, one of the other things that we, talked about in the earlier portion of this live cast was the fullness of what the word sozo which is a greek word that you were saying was used over 110 times in the new testament right yes yeah that's correct and this word sozo means go ahead it means saved healed delivered protection provision power and authority yes yes that is the, <laughs> that is something so huge to grasp that the english language is very limited it's very um mm -hmm. one-dimensional it means a singular thing it, it, and so we use whereas the greek will use one word to describe many things the English language, it uses one thing to describe one thing and another thing to describe another. So it's important to, to have the tools to really understand exactly what something is said, the fullness of what some, 
what um, is being said when we read the Bible. Um, so we've looked at the example of the woman with the issue of blood receiving sozo from Jesus, the mm -hmm. gathering demoniac receiving sozo, and then the fruit mm -hmm. of that being like full-blown revival. Yep. <laughs> What's one more example from the Bible of sozo? Um, I, I, again, um, I was talking about in, in Romans 10, nine, where it yes. says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. That yes. word saved, um, is sozo. And so that gives us, a, a, another picture from scripture of what happens when we get saved. And it's not just salvation. Right. Hey, we get to go to heaven. It's all of that. And I, and I, I think that's the very foundation and basis of it. Right. Is if the church would actually explain what happens. We, so many times we just leave people there. We don't disciple them any further. So they, do, you know, it's like, yeah, hey, you said, you said the sinner's prayer. Okay. Right. Which is, I'm not even going to go there because yeah. it's really, we're just confessing and believing. So sinner's yeah. prayer is something the church came up with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> scripture tells us if we confess and believe that we are saved or sozoed right and um you know so we've settled for just you know you say this simple prayer and and you're good and jesus takes care of everything else and we leave people with that right and then they're like well my life's a mess how is jesus taking care of this like i feel better like i got set free and i'm saved i'm going to heaven yay but now what like, yeah. what do I do? Because, you know, what if, what if they were an addict and they right. just came, what, how do I walk in freedom? Right. How do I walk in deliverance? How, how do I get healed from, from the emotional right. wounds and the things in my life? You know, how, how is Jesus the answer? We don't give them the how. Right. A lot of times churches fail at walking them through. Well, now this is what you do. This is who you are. And, 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 you know, Jesus calls us by our name and right. by our, our destiny and what he's put in us. Right. And, and it's like, we, we need to walk with somebody right? and do life with somebody, you know, like they did in Acts, they did life together right? where we're doing life together as a tribe, right? right. And, and bearing right. one another's burdens and going through and walking people through, this is how we do it. This is how, right. this is what this means. Right, right, right. I really <clears throat> locked in on something you were saying um, where you were describing, you know, we get, we walk somebody through um, who, who Jesus is, uh, that he died for their sins. Uh, we, we say a prayer with them, but then they're left going, now what? And mm -hmm. we for we forget or we just don't process the fullness. And you know, I think of people who are bound up on certain things. Maybe it's an addiction, maybe it's chronic depression, maybe it's anxiety and panic attacks. Um, and, you know, we say to them in effect, go be well, you know, go, mm -hmm. you know, be well, be filled. See you later. And this is where Sozo actual and, and, or, or, or what's worse, we just say, well, pray about it or read your Bible more. There's no, there's no Holy Spirit behind that. Right. So describe how Sozo um, becomes effective. So um, I, I'm going to explain that by explaining this here from scripture. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 61, 1, it says, he sent me to bind up, and this is Jesus, right? This is a prophecy mm -hmm. about Jesus. 
He sent right. me to bind up the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. to proclaim freedom for the captives mm -hmm. and release from darkness for the prisoners. Whoa. So, yeah. so there's a difference that's distinguished between a captive, right? right? He came to he he came to bind up the brokenhearted. That one's pretty easy, but freedom for captives, and to release from darkness the prisoners. Oh, I love so that. So a captive is someone who has been, you know, in in Sozo ministry they teach us they've been slimed okay. by their environment. Okay, oh, so they have been. Right. These are people who have. Um, you know, we, we can just, you know, they're, they're, they're processing stuff from their environment and they've gotten slimed by, you know, just the stuff that they're living in and we can pray for them and, um, you know, break things off and it's yeah. pretty, and they'll feel better and they'll, they'll, they'll be set free. We'll, yeah. They'll experience some freedom, but a prisoner is different. Mm -hmm. A prisoner and it usually um, pertains to somebody who has been partnered with, they partnered with a lie or they partnered with unforgiveness mm -hmm. and they have, they have now opened the door for the enemy to take them prisoner and build a stronghold, you know, it talks about the strongholds. These are in our mind, right? Right. Um, um, this is a, in our soul soul realm, which is a mind, will, and emotions. Right. So right. this is a soulish thing that happens where the enemy comes. We have opened the door by either unforgiveness. Um, we've opened the door through um, maybe we dabbled in the occult and it was an open door. Maybe right. we struggled in sexual sin and it was an open door, you know, maybe we partnered with hate and anger and all this stuff. So those things open the door to allow the enemy to come in take us prisoner. And he builds a dark stronghold around that area. And Jesus wants to come and release us from that. Okay. I feel as though there may be somebody out there who needs an example of of partnering what it uh, like a like an actual like a I don't know if there's maybe a case study that you could provide where I feel like somebody might need an example of what it means to partner you've well, yeah, I mean, this is, go ahead yeah this you know this is something I've walked through you know okay. um just in my own life uh -huh. you know, um, and, and the sozos I've had, which is just, mm -hmm. that just means inner healing. Right. But, um, for a long time, I was a Christian uh -huh. and, um, you know, I was saved, you know, yeah. but, and I went to church and I, you know, did worship and I did all this stuff, you know, uh -huh. but I was so rejected on the inside, mm -hmm. on the inside of me. I felt not good enough. Mm -hmm. I felt unworthy because of things in my past. Mm -hmm. I felt rejected because of things in my past. Mm -hmm. And I partnered with those lies because the enemy will come in and he can whisper things into our, into our ear. And he can say, you know what? You may be saved, but no one's going to forgive you of your past. It's going to follow you because you were a criminal and you did this and you did, you know, Satan had this whole list of things that, right. that he'd rehearse in my head. Right. And, you know, a lot of times, and I knew I could say, no, I don't believe that. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. But sometimes we let those thoughts sit there. Right. And we don't take those thoughts captive. Like it tells us to in second Corinthians 10, five. Right. And instead we let those thoughts sit there because they're kind of partially true. That's, that's what makes a good lie. You right, know, right. we it, were that the truth, in the past. It's the truth right? lacking context or lacking and, you know, <laughs> lacking context. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I, you know, I was those things in my past and, right. and he gets us to partner and, and let that sit there. And we partner with that. And you're like, you know, that's right. You know, I just, huh. I'm just never going to be accepted. 
Right. And then he'll show us a, a current example, you know, and one I struggled with mm -hmm. is when, when I was in church, I would sit there and I would just, instead of reach out and, and come out of myself, I'd be the person who would sit um, in the, in, in the chair during meet and greet time. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want anyone to come talk to me and I wasn't going to go talk to anybody, but if you didn't come talk to me, I was going to sit there and quietly judge you on why you didn't come talk to me well, and if you're such a good christian and you're supposed to be known by the why aren't you coming to talk to me yeah. but in reality i'm just as responsible to get up and do that <laughs> as well but here i was so caught up in rejection and and the and the yuck the slime from the enemy and i started to partner with it right that it just built a stronghold of rejection, which really that rejection started clear back in my childhood. I didn't know that mm -hmm. until walking, you know, through some healing. A lot of times, some of the stuff that we start to get, get caught up on is the real issue is something way back, you know, that happened to us. Right. And maybe we don't even have any, you know, knowledge of it, but God can show us. Right. And that's, that's part of what, what this ministry is, is really not anything to do with what the ministers are doing, but everything to do with what God is showing and God leads and directs the Sozo ministry. And he says, you know what, there's these areas. And usually it's something like, you know, I could put my finger on, I felt rejected and I would only let people so close to me because I didn't trust them. And you know, I didn't want to be that way. And as I started to walk in freedom and realize, start to learn who I was in Christ and, and all these different things, I was like, man, I'm a mess. Why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Why, you know, it's, why can't I trust people? Why can't I let people into my heart? Now, not everybody belongs there, but you know, there's some people that are in our inner circle that we should be able to share our heart with. And I couldn't even do that. Right. I was like, that's not safe. Right. So, that's what, that's what I mean by partnering with something. It caused an issue in my life where I couldn't have close friends. Really, right. I couldn't have genuine friendship until I dealt with it. Right. So is it, you know, the, the word that keeps coming to my mind along, along alongside of partnering is, is like agreeing. You're agreeing yes. with the lie. Yes. You're power because you say, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's not. So we're basically calling a lie the truth. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's that's an excellent, excellent, clear. That's a very good description. So I'm just going to check here real quick and see if we've got some comments or questions. Awesome. Sweet. So. Yeah, those of you who are watching, if you have any feedback um or any questions please type those in this can this can be fully interactive now because i'm able to see your comments in real time so if you have comments for tammy questions for tammy please put those um in the comments um if you're wanting prayer or ministry please put those in the comments as well so tammy let's um let's just kind of walk through let's uh what are some um i don't know if you're able to share this or if you can kind of take a maybe a composite of people that you have ministered to um and and walk us through what you do when somebody comes to you seeking sozo okay well when someone comes and they're you know usually it's something that they're going around the same issue over and over and they can't seem to get past it. Okay. You know, um, you know, I've dealt with people who struggle with, for instance, pornography um, is a huge one and they can't seem to get past it. We'll see the pornography is a symptom of a root issue. Okay. Pornography really is not the issue. Right. There's something, there's something else that's causing them to go to that. It so, is there maybe is there is there a common denominator that goes with porn with a porn addiction like uh, is there a common um vacuum within a person that they're seeking to fill or can it be different can it be different for each person it can be different for each person 
Okay. Yeah. It's totally different for each person. Um, you know, when, when we, we do marriage ministry too, my husband and okay. I, so, um, but when we show people stuff on this, they kind of teach you the, um, halt. So are you hurting? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? Those are the things that kind of trigger people that way. But, you know, there's, there's deeper things than that. Okay. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that, um, have struggled with it one because they were shown it at a young age mm -hmm. and, you know, um, there's a whole lot of different root systems in that. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of it, they, they just, you know, it's the only way they feel they have any power or control. Ooh. Um, sure. So, um, it can be, you know, identity issues and it's the only thing that makes them feel like they have value. And so, I mean, there's just so many different things Wow. and that's why this ministry, um, is very much spirit led mm -hmm. because only God knows what that root is and God shows that person and we have them ask. So if someone was coming for ministry, they're going to have a presenting issue, Okay. you know, something that, that they have tried to pray through and they can't get freedom. Maybe they struggle with fear and anxiety. Maybe they struggle with depression. Maybe they struggle with relationship issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the list can go on and on sure. of, of what that looks like. But if they come to me, you know, I, I would tell you everybody should walk through at least one Sozo. Because if you've been hurt, you've had something bad happen in your life, um, you've been abused in any way, you've had church hurt in any way, <laughs> you know, it's basically the biggest thing that causes people um, to not move forward is roots of unforgiveness. And they, they can not even be aware they have it. Mm -hmm. And for instance, let me give you a, for instance, with myself, my dad died when I was 12 mm -hmm. and I had to forgive him, even though I didn't feel like I needed to, I had to forgive him for, for dying. And not being there and missing out on things in my life, like when I got married and when I graduated high school yeah. and, you know, when I had my first kid and all these things. And as I did that, it brought so much healing and it allowed me to get closer to the, to father God. Right. So, right. um, the goal of Sozo is to bring us closer to father God, Jesus and Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, set us free from the things that are entangling us and keeping us from moving forward and things that we, you know, we're just tripping up on right. in our walk. Breaking down those, uh, what I see is it breaks, it breaks down the, the barriers and the um, destructive, well, I want to use the word boundary, but a boundary to me is a very positive thing. So it's a wall that yeah, it's a stronghold, a stronghold. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. A stronghold, um, a fortress that we, yes. have, that we have, um, like you say, partnered in building that separates mm -hmm. us from the intimacy and the fullness of what God wants us to have. Yes. So what have you seen in your in your times of ministry with people as these truths begin to penetrate and make make a way into a person's heart? Um, well, I I can share, you know, I'll just share my daughter's testimony. Okay. Um, I know she shared a little bit just on her Facebook page and some things, but um, she, she experienced some hurt and um, mm -hmm. did not know how to process it at, at you know, age 11. <laughs> and yeah, um, age. yeah some stuff from, from stuff from church and, and people in the church, you know, and um, she ended up partnering with fear, fear of yeah. loss. She partnered with fear in such a way that um, by the time she was in middle school, um, she did not, I mean, she was so sick from anxiety. Oh. I didn't know what was wrong with her. And wow. I didn't really even really recognize, 
you know, because she she didn't really share. She was having this, mm -hmm. you know, almost like she was having panic attacks. Oh, wow. But she would describe it so differently, and I, I didn't physically see it. It would happen oh. at school. And, you know, she's like, I don't know. I'm just sick all the time. I feel sick to my stomach. And, you know, anywhere we would go, she would start to get sick. And then I started putting it together, and it's like, okay, well, I've taken her to doctors. There's nothing medically wrong that I can find that's going on with her. Mm. Um, she's having panic attacks and anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And to the point where when she was a freshman, I had to take her out of school. Oh. And, you know, homeschool her mm -hmm. because she's missed so much school mm -hmm. from getting sick and me having to pick her up from school. And, you know, I tried to, tried to pray through and, and you know everything I knew knew to do, and I'm you know I just remember <laughs> feeling helpless, like God, like like what do we do here? And it was just the process of walking her through when she was ready. She had right. to be ready right. to walk through inner healing, and um, you know some of it wasn't with me. Some of it was with a close friend who's trained in sozo as well. Mm -hmm. um, because you know i'm her mom and she needs to be able to share freely right. without worrying about hurting me and um right. so she at her worst was cutting oh she was um not able to even have her best friend over at the house she wouldn't leave the house oh. she wouldn't go anywhere and if I didn't make her go somewhere, like if we went to a family, something, she'd wake me up all throughout the night to pray and she couldn't sleep and like just, she was tormented. Aww. And um, God completely set her free. Like, it's just so cool because she, mm -hmm. she went to go see a uh, Havila Cunnington with, with me and some friends on Friday uh -huh. and um, you know, able to go and worship and and uh, just i think it was easter sunday at our own church she's mm -hmm. jumping up and down in the altar area <laughs> just freedom and 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 praying and i'm trying to lead worship trying not to cry <laughs> like you know because <laughs> so much freedom that's the difference that should happen in in sozo like what can you expect is you can expect your life to be completely different you to feel completely different i've seen people that um had no voice felt like they couldn't speak for their own felt like they couldn't tell people no oh, felt wow. like um you know all that kind of stuff i've seen them through sozo ministry walk out and and now they're you know they're spiritual leaders oh my gosh <laughs> you know they're just totally totally different and just you know a matter matter of several years they're now walking in, in fullness. I've, I've had people tell me they've been through 11 plus years of Christian counseling and therapy, which was all awesome. And, you know, that uh -huh. was good. But in a three hour Sozo se session, they get done and they're like, are you kidding me? I've been to therapy for 11 years and I've never experienced so much freedom that I experienced just now, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and just, just, just amazing things. There's nothing yeah. impossible for God. So the transformation in people is amazing. It's That's an abundant awesome. life. It's walking in who God's called them to be. Amen. I do have a question here for you. Sure. Um, it is from uh, Biff Nagal. Mm -hmm. And uh, she asks, um, what about after being walked through and still having trouble of feeling like you are not fully healed on the issue you went through Sozo for? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great question. Uh -huh. um, so one of the goals of Sozo is sometimes you need more than one. But okay. that's not the goal. But um, the okay. goal is to that you stay free. But you have to remember some people who go through a sozo, maybe they've gone through 30 years of life. Mm -hmm. And there's 30 years of hurt and baggage that, that you know, they need to go through and deal with. Sure. But, you know, my friend Amanda, she just, she, she explains it like this. And I think it's the best way to explain it. We're mm -hmm. like an onion. Uh huh. And you got to peel and, and Holy Spirit's a gentleman. 
and he knows what we can deal with. We can't deal with 30 years of stuff right. in one session, in a three hour session, Very you know, because that's a lot. Yes. <laughs> so he knows our heart and he knows what we're ready to deal with mm-hmm. and what we're not ready to deal with. Mm-hmm. And so he'll peel the layers that are ready to come off. Mm. and he'll continue to do that and and really sozo's there to teach us how to walk and stay in freedom okay because really the initial part of it is like once you've gone through one or two depending on what you know has happened to you in your life Uh some people need need several of them i did i you know i did i needed probably more than i can count (laughs) yeah (laughs) because you know, I, I came, I came through drug addiction and witchcraft and, and, and so many things in my past that, you know, I had to, had to walk through some stuff right? and allow God to bring some healing. But, um, the biggest thing is when you leave a Sozo, we give you a whole sheet of truth that God revealed to you. Now the Bible tells us that we'll know the truth Uh and the truth sets us free so we're replacing god's replacing all of those lies that we've partnered with and can't come into agreement with right the truth we're renouncing the lies and we're declaring the truth so you Mm got to continue to do that to walk in freedom so if you're say for instance you walk through a sozo and it had to do with fear okay right Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take you know second timothy 1 7 god has not given me a spirit of fear but one of power love and a sound mind and you're gonna have to declare that you know it it takes what 18 20 days to break a habit right in fear and that was your go-to yeah god's gonna give you freedom and he's gonna set you free from that prison right but then you're to stay free you got to declare that truth Right. And not part because the enemy is going to do what his his MO is still kill and destroy. He's going to come back and try to steal. He's right. going to come back and he's going to lie to you and say, you didn't really receive healing. Mm-hmm. It's all a facade. You're right. not really delivered. You're not really, you know, he's right. going to do that. And you're going to say, no, this is the truth I have. This is what God showed me. God says this. God right. said that his perfect love cast out all fear. God says that I get to walk in his dunamis dynamite power, that mm-hmm. I get to walk in his love and that I have a saved, healed, set free, delivered mind. And I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. And so right. fear has no place in me. And so it does take work on your part to declare that, but that's, I mean, we're, we're in warfare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have to, to stay free. We got to, therefore, having done all, it says in Ephesians, having put on our armor, therefore, it says stand. That's right. right? That's right. <laughs> so you got to stand with that resistance and say, nope, you're not taking me again, enemy. This is the That's truth. Right. And we resist the devil. And it says in James, he flees. That's right. And I, and one of the things that I've learned it, just in my own journey of, of healing and transformation is like what it got very much in line, very, very much in line with what you're saying there. It's number one, it, 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 deep, it, healing is a process. It, healing mm-hmm. is a layer by layer, step by step process. Mm-hmm. It's, um, the word of God describes it, uh, in, um, I believe it's in second Corinthians from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. Um, Just like the butterfly you've got on your chest there. God will allow it in in a way. I mean, when, when God changes a caterpillar into a butterfly, they literally turn into goo first. Mm -hmm. They turn into goo first. And then they change into the butterfly. We have to be willing to be patient in the process. Some transformations happen instantly. Like I've, I've seen some people literally delivered from drugs in an instant, in a second. Whereas for others, it's a step by step process of of learning to walk in freedom 
for some yeah. things in our life that are uh, wounds and, and um, uh, you know, uh, deep wounds. Some are healed in an instant with one truth. Others are a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. And I think what you were saying is that the enemy will come in and try and discourage us during that process but the key is to stand on the truth. Yes. So, um, and you were you were speaking about declaring that truth over yes. and over again. Dive into that a little more. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of times we've partnered with um, a lie. For instance, one of the biggest ones people face is, "I'm not good enough." And so um, we have them renounce the lie. I renounce the lie that says that I am not good enough. And right. I declare the truth that Jesus says I'm good enough. Jesus perfectly and wonderfully formed me and knit me in my mother's womb. You know, so Psalms 139, let's go, you know, go to scripture and declare that. So I am more than good enough. I am made in God's image. <laughs> God doesn't make junk. <laughs> so, you know, it's declaring those truths. And, you know, it's when we declare the truth, the truth sets us free. And so Holy Spirit is the guide that just leads and guides and directs us into all truth. And so, you know, it's just so awesome to be able to do that, you know, and you come to a sozo and it's, you know, there's usually two or three ministers there oh, and we'll cool. have one who, who, who facilitates, um, mm -hmm. and, and they kind of just facilitate. Okay. So if, for instance, my first thing is I'm going to ask you, um, to prep before you come to a sozo mm -hmm. and ask God, what are lies that you're believing? Mm -hmm. Are there people that you need to forgive? Is there trauma that you can't get over mm -hmm. in your life? Right. that has happened in the past and you right. feel like you know you may have forgiven but what have you done with the emotions that were connected to that situation good point so um you know those are the things i have them just spend time with god the week before and ask god so when they come in for so i'm going to say if you could leave one one thing in this room and never deal with it again what would that be it's a good question. And, you know, and, and so that kind of gives us a guideline. And then if they've prepped really well, they're going to come in and they're going to hand me, well, here's some notes. Here's what I feel God says I need to mm -hmm. deal with. And so then we have a facilitator who's the main minister who will just kind of facilitate where to go based on the information the person has given and based on what they're healing from Holy, hearing from Holy Spirit, we have a second person who is praying and interceding and also taking notes. They're going to be writing down the truth that is revealed and what God's showing this person as they walk through freedom so that when they leave, they get to walk out with truth. And sometimes, you know, that person gets pictures. I just recently did a sozo on Saturday and, yes. uh -huh. and they got a little picture, you know, and they kind of drew it down and, and did that. And then sometimes we even have a third person in, the, in there and that third person is the intercessor and they're just, they're just in there praying the whole time. Right. And so, you know, it's just, it's just a really, um, awesome way to get freedom. And, and I have, I have not experienced anything where people have not gotten freedom there's been one time somebody wasn't quite ready and we just stopped we didn't go through right. you know, not, if someone's not ready we're, that's okay yeah you know yeah. so yeah. we're just we start started to go somewhere and they weren't ready it's like well that's okay we'll just we'll just pray and seal you up and right um, but but the majority of people are they come ready and and they walk away completely different and walk away with freedom with whatever area they didn't want to ever deal with again. So, and sometimes it takes layers. So just like, yeah, uh, yeah. like that question is sometimes 
you know, there may be, if, if it's something you still can't get over, mm -hmm. well, let's talk about it and see if that's something maybe you just need to press in further. And maybe you're just ready for another layer of that to right. come off. Right. There is another question here or a comment. Um, this is from Bliss Benedict. And she says, um, I have had multiple Sozo ministry times, more than five. More and more freedom is what happens to me. The enemy would come back and try to tell me I was still dealing with the problem. I had to remind myself and the enemy that I am no longer in agreement with the lies and I am free and not stepping into those traps anymore. What an awesome statement there. Mm -hmm. That is that is such a perfect example of, of what you were describing, Tammy. Yep. Amen. Amen. I thought it was a question, but it's actually just a statement, but it's an excellent statement. Absolutely. And then, um, Joanne was saying that she was well, she's walked through Sozo multiple sessions, but she still needs Sozo. <laughs> And so in, in, in a way, what she's describing there is something you've touched on as well, which is Sozo in many respects is a, is a spiritual skill. Is, yes. is that accurate? Yeah. Describe yeah, it. it it's, it's really just, um, I guess I, the best way to describe it is before I even knew what Sozo ministry was, um, as far as getting trained and, and going through the training, um, I realized, for instance, I had a friend who was dealing with fear uh -huh. and I took this friend on a, on a road trip and they had been in a car accident and it caused them to like, when I was going around corners and stuff where they were just like grabbing onto the side of the door and like panicked you uh -huh. can see it. and I was you know I was like we were on a four-hour road trip and I, I pulled over <laughs> to the parking lot and I was like I are you done with this fear I said are you done with this fear mm -hmm. and they're like yeah I'm, I'm done with this fear well, I was like okay well let's ask well, we're just gonna pray and let's deal with this let's ask Holy Spirit mm -hmm. when did when was the first time you felt that that kind of fear Mm -hmm. so we just started asking holy spirit and went like almost on a treasure hunt uh -huh. to find like you know uh -huh. where was the first time and let's bring freedom here without even knowing anything mm -hmm. now that was a really long process i probably sat with this person for five hours oh wow and we walked through things that happened in her childhood and god brought healing 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 well mm -hmm. once you've been trained you have tools to help you know how to get there and what to do when you get there right. you know so how to how to deal with something faster than just what we were doing but i just knew right. that god was the answer right, right so, exactly. and if i don't know what the root is and, and she didn't know what the root is god knows right. so that's kind of how we we did and it was just like right. a prophetic journey of 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 asking and listening right. and you know it, it reminds me of matthew 7 where jesus said ask seek knock Ask and the door will be open. Seek and you will find, you know? So it's it's kind of that journey, but with, you know, uh -huh. so though there's tools to know where to go and and, and what to do. Right. Um, right. If that makes sense. Absolutely, it makes sense. I mean, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing in that, like, when I took a motorcycle riding and then um, I was going through this, this period of where I had to ride by myself because Jade wasn't able to. So I would, when I'd be riding, I'd be declaring scriptures all the time as I was riding. I'd be like, thou, O Lord, art a shield about me or the glory and lifter of my head. I have the mind of Christ, so I make wise and prudent decisions. Um, I fear no evil because you are with me. And I mean, this was just something that I would do over and over and over again as I wrote. What I didn't understand was happening in that process is that God was programming my 
mind and downloading into my spirit for other areas in my life mm -hmm. where I was either battling confusion or anxiety or fear. So basically where I'm going here is how does declaring the word of God fit in? Because you've touched on it. You definitely have. But I feel as though we could go deeper. Where does declaring the, the word of God over your life as a discipline fit into Sozo? So, and I'm thinking specifically of people that are walking through through a time of healing and restoration that doesn't, that, that's that's more of a journey. It's, it's not like a day event. It's more of a, maybe it, it's a, it's a more prolonged journey for them. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like when someone has a prolonged journey, Sosa helps accelerate that journey uh -huh. um, because it brings more healing. Um, and, and to show that you can, you can share that, that um, artwork that your husband did. Absolutely. Um, because I think it gives a good visual of what I mean by it accelerates it. Okay. Let me go ahead and do that now. I just want to make sure that I've got it up here. Okay. I'm sure I've got it. Then I'm going to, okay. Yes. All right. Great. Now I can share the screen and it's right there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and blow this up as well. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So when you come into a Sozo, you see there's band-aids on that one side of the heart and it looks darker. And it's just like, there's areas where you stuck a band-aid on it and you're like, I'm, that's good enough and I don't want to deal with it. Or this trauma happened and I don't want to deal with it any longer. And what happens in a Sozo is God knows what band-aids are ready to come off. Oh, good. And, and he, and he knows what parts are ready to be healed and restored. And what happens is he walks in, takes those band-aids off and you come out with an abundant life, just like on this other side here where, where the girls on the, on the swing where, where now you have the truth of God's word and you know, the truth and it sets you free. And, and I think that the girl on the swing is a representation of childhood where, you know, we just have absolute faith when we're a child, whatever we're told by our parents, like we believe, you know, when we're a kid, I remember I, I used to think I was hidden. If I was underneath a blanket, nobody could see me. I'm invisible, <laughs> right? Because you have faith that, you know, it's dark under here. No one can see. I can't see. So we have that childlike faith and that's what God comes and he restores, right? The kingdom of God belongs to such as these as a child. And we have to have faith like a child. So he restores that everything that the enemy stole him back to a place of where we have abundant life, like a child. I love that. because we're his child. And in order to stay free like that, as we continue to declare the word of God over us so that we are free. I mean, that's just in our normal journey, yeah, Sozo accelerates that, but you got to stay free. You got to stay on that swing. And it's right. like the momentum of being on that swing is declaring the word of God. So mm -hmm. Proverbs 18, 21 says that, that death and life are in the power of our tongue and of its fruit, you will eat. So if yeah. I'm going to continue to, you know, say, oh, I'm a worthless this, or I'm this, oh. or I'm never going to do this. Or if I was only better at this, I'm a failure at this. And if I, if it's negative, 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 it right. comes out of my mouth all the time. I am partnering with the enemy and I'm speaking death over myself that and I'm partnering back with the other side of that heart where it's darkness and going back to Egypt per yeah. se, you know, going back to bondage, going back to slavery, going back to that prison. But if I declare the truth of God's word over myself, even when I don't feel it, I'm not led by my emotions. I'm a triune being. I am first spirit 
then I'm my soul, my mind, will, and emotions, and then I'm my body. Mm-hmm. So if I, if my spirit man is, is declaring God's word and speaking life over myself, mm-hmm. then everything else is going to line up. My right. emotions will line up. You know, if, if they didn't at first, my spirit is going to say, no, this is not the truth. Here's what mm-hmm. the truth is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to eat of that, that fruit of truth. And it's going to, it's going to come to fruition in, in the rest of me. And then all of a sudden my emotions change and I have joy and I have peace and I have assurance. And, you know, I walk with my head up and my shoulders back because I am declaring the truth of the Lord over myself and, and it's life. It's life. Right. Right. I loved what you touched on because so often we do this without thinking. And I, and, 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 and honestly, I really firmly believe that it's something that we do not teach on enough um, in the body of Christ. And that is the power of our words and the power of our confession. And, and what are we reinforcing with our mouth? Um, are we reinforcing life and life to the full? Or are we reinforcing the exact opposite? How often do you see that play out in your ministry? Uh, exactly what? Um, the Where somebody comes in with a certain issue and you discover that they've been spending a lot of time confessing death and destruction basically over their life confessing, oh, I'm always going to be this way. Oh, you know, I'm just, um, I'm just not very smart or, you know, those, those, those confessions that we make oftentimes so without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I'm just, I mean, when I think of it on a more, you know, not benign, but just offhanded level like oh I'm just so old I hear that a lot now that I'm in my 50s you know oh I'm just so old (laughs) you know um uh getting old gets is just sucks you know these kinds (laughs) of things that we say without even thinking about it but in all honesty what God says is that he renews our strength like the young eagles yes we will run and will not grow weary we will walk and we will not faint Caleb said, I'm as strong in my 80s as I was in my 40s, right? Um, So I I guess that's what I'm wanting to touch on is how have you, have you, do you find it, or if you do find it, how frequently do you find it in your ministry that people have just been simply confessing the opposite of what they're seeking? in their life almost a hundred percent i'd say a hundred percent wow you know i i think i have to watch it all the time and when i slip up my kids are correcting me Uh you know (laughs) because we are so conditioned Mm -hmm. by society to Mm -hmm. you know like for instance to claim this is my diagnosis my pain my whatever i don't claim those things right I'm claiming it is mine and now I'm partnering with the enemy it's like I may I'm not being ignorant okay that I have a diagnosis by a doctor spoken over me but my great physician Jesus speaks Mm -hmm. a better word over me amen and you know I will continue to do what the doctor shows me to do yes and 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 do that until I see a manifestation of complete healing in my life but i'm going to speak that over myself i'm going to claim that over myself you know there's i'm in a season where i you know i have stuff diagnosed over me that i don't accept Uh and and i and i'm claiming the the manifest healing in my body that jesus paid for on the Mm -hmm. cross and i'm going to stand on that until i see it completely fully manifested in my body and and i'm going to contend for it 
And yeah. why? Because, because that's what Jesus paid for. Yes. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to be, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just at that place where I'm going to be like Jacob who wrestled and I'm going to grab hold of that promise and I'm going to not let go until I'm blessed. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I think that, um, we, we grow so weary in doing good, but we forget that in the due season, we get to see the harvest. If we, if we don't faint, that's what it tells us in Galatians. So it's like, I'm going to grab hold of this yes. and I'm going to, you know, I may get knocked down, but I'm still going to hold on. I'm going to grab hold it. of it and I'm going to partner with it. And I'm going to hang on to the truth. And until I get blessed. There and that's what we need to be not only in physical healing, but emotional healing. You know, we, we need to be, I think we just become pansy Christians, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up your sword and fight. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think we would make it back in the day. <laughs> because, you know, they faced way worse stuff than we faced right now. And, yeah. and we just, we complain and we want to go back to Egypt and we want it easy. And, you know, why should I have to declare this over myself? Well, you know, I'd rather declare the truth over myself and do that every day and, and live an abundant life than, than to partner with the enemy That's right. and, and, and be caught up in, in um, in a prison of depression and confusion and all the stuff yeah. that comes along when we partner with him with the right. lies that he speaks over us that's right that's right i think one of the biggest takeaways i'm receiving from this conversation and what's what's also really cool is it's it's what we've been talking about in church too and that is i love what you say about you know this is what jesus paid for this is what jesus paid for when he when he gave his body to be beaten and nailed to that cross when he rose from the dead this is what he paid for our total freedom mm -hmm. our total provision and that when we get a diagnosis it's not ours right it is not ours what is ours is freedom and healing and renewal. Um, I love I love that. It's what what Jesus paid for. Absolutely. And, but where we have to partner with Christ is in what we confess. Even if we're not quite feeling it. Talk about that a little bit when our feelings don't line up with um, what we need to confess with the truth <laughs> to confess. Yeah. Well, I think a perfect example of being led by our emotions is the world we're living in right now. Mm. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm a unicorn today, or I feel like I'm this today <laughs> and I identify as this today. And, um, you know, not to make light of people that, um, you know, struggle with identity, but the, the issue is when we're led by our emotions, it will lead us on a roller coaster ride of crazy because, yes. you know, we, we can be up here high and happy and then plummet down to just everything is horrible and derail our roller coaster and, blow up because now you know it's not my way it's you're not doing things my way and and now i'm just gonna blow up and throw a tantrum and you know it just it's just crazy when we're led by our emotions it because is. it's not reality it's not reality and yeah. we need to that's where self-control comes in remember mm -hmm. it's one of the fruit of the spirit i love it yeah <laughs> good it's where we have that self-control and it's putting to check our emotions mm -hmm. and not being led by that because you know i'm going to give an example god led me to um go pray with some people that i bought some stuff from off craigslist mm -hmm. and um I ended up praying with them and long story short i get invited the lady was having health issues she was pregnant um 
and she was um, inviting me to please come pray with her baby when she had her baby at the hospital. I'm like, okay, you know, just because I stopped to pray with her while I was buying something from her, she Uh was so moved to do this. Well, I went ahead and did that, went to the hospital, loved on her, you know, she didn't know the Lord, and she's like, you know, I just have done so many bad things in my life, I don't think God could love me, and I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what you've done, God loves you in spite of what you've done, Mm -mm. and um, prayed with that family and blessed them, while a couple weeks later, I seen on the news that America's Most Wanted was caught in Portland, Oh wow! and it was this family. Wow. And they had been on the run for five years because they had been adopting children and abusing them to the point um, they killed one of them and oh. had been on the run. And I was freaking out before the Lord going like, seriously, God, I, you know, I go pick something up off Craigslist. And the one time I decide to go by myself. <laughs> it ends up being America's most wanted. Like, why would you put me in this position? Why didn't I have discernment, God? Like, what is going on? And he spoke to my spirit and he said, You've been praying to be led with compassion and moved with compassion like I am. He wow. goes, Would you have gone and prayed for her, having known who she was and what she had done? Wow. And the answer was no. If I was led by my emotions, I would be somebody like that, you know, my emotions in my flesh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, I would be no, like, there no. is no way, you know. <laughs> I would yeah, give my little justice. <laughs> I was like, not happening. But guess what? Yeah. God doesn't God doesn't God doesn't see people that way. Right. God God has compassion even on that person because that person we don't know what happened to her to cause her to be like that. Mm-hmm. God sees a child who's hurting and victimized. And we see somebody who's a monster mm-hmm. if we're led through our emotions. So I need to remove the lens of my emotions and be led by the spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Armored up for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in, in the spirit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, not, not, uh, not, you know, that, that, that again, exercising, you know, exercising discernment for sure, but being, being available, I mean, you were the right person in that moment and, yeah. uh, you, you were definitely the right person in that moment, uh, for that person. And I, you know, I think that that's a that's something to think about. That there are individuals. Well, um, I'm wanting to be careful how I phrase this. Each individual is uniquely designed with them and and carrying a message that only they can deliver and to be available as you were to the holy spirit to deliver that message because i may not have been the right person for that for, for her but you definitely were and the other thing that you did is you went to the Lord when you found out and you sought his counsel. Yeah. So rather than just running with your emotions and saying, God doesn't exist because he put me in there with an axe murderer. Right? <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you were like, hey, God, what's up, man? What is up with this? <laughs> <laughs> well yeah yeah because you know i i i really have a um been gifted with discernment uh-huh. and so i i was like how can i be by somebody like that and not feel or see anything yeah. in the spiritual realm uh-huh. i couldn't see it 
this because I was praying to be led with compassion. God doesn't see the demonic. He's not concerned with it because he's our, he's the answer. Right. He sees what's going on in that person's heart. He sees all those band-aids, just like, you know, Jade's picture. He sees mm-hmm. all the, all the trauma and all the stuff that's going on that has caused that person to be bound up and imprisoned the way they are and to act out from that place. And that's what he sees. Right. And so that's why I'm just so, um, you know, that's my continued prayer that I moved with compassion, like, like Jesus was moved, physically moved with compassion for people, because I want to see people always through God's eyes, not through my emotions, not through my perception, not through, you know, anything else, not by their outward appearance, not by any of that. I want to see what God sees. And I want to call that out of that person. Right, right, right. Um, There was something that you said just now that really, I'm trying to reflect back what it was because it was, it was, yes, seeing people as God sees them, not as our emotions would interpret that person, Correct. not as our past might interpret that person. Um, I really believe that's that's a word for all of us to process. Talk a little bit more about that. I'm going to check and see if we've got any more comments here or questions. I feel like, um, you know, in society, nothing has changed since Jesus. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's wow. you know, there's nothing new under the sun, Solomon said, because we we view people through the lens of how we grew up, you know, um, I grew up in church and, you know, I was told people with tattoos and, and all these things, they, you know, we put a stigma on them. They're bad. They're hard. They're this, they're that there's a a prejudgment in society based on all these things. And it changes as, you know, the generations go on, but some of it stays the same and we need to not look at people like that and judge people based on that. I can't tell you how many times when I tell somebody I'm a worship leader, I was a youth pastor, or, you know, mm-hmm. or I, I go to church and I, their jaws drop because, uh-huh. you know, I have piercings and, you know, <laughs> the color of my hair and I, God forbid, I have tattoos on my body and, yeah. <laughs> you know, <Right> here. <laughs> you don't look like you go to church. You know? <laughs> like, well, what does that look like? You know, I should represent right. Jesus, you know, right. so it's not, I, I'm just the cool part of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I do have a question. This is going to take us back a little bit to, uh, um, earlier in our conversation where we were talking about diagnosis uh-huh. and uh, Jen Ventrice <clears throat> um, has a, has a, has a um, statement here, um, again, about diagnosis. And she goes, what if the diagnosis brings answers and answers bring peace? The diagnosis is the explanation of every pain from childhood and the path for treatment. I found freedom in my diagnosis because the puzzle is solved. Um, that's a good, good one. Um, that'd be something I would definitely would love to have a conversation with her, her about because Mm -hmm. does the diagnosis, it might answer some questions you know, and, and again, she doesn't share with what, what, what that is, but a diagnosis might answer some questions. For instance, the fear and anxiety that was over my daughter answered some questions that fear and anxiety caused, um, gluten and dairy intolerance in her body. Oh, we're, we're, we're we're triune beings. So when, when she partnered with that, it caused horrific 
intolerances to the point where I mean she's like 90 pounds wet wow. and she was was getting sick every time she ate and and lost over 10 pounds and was like skin and bones and um we went through about a year and a half of her going to a natural path and we had answers okay now we have answers there's been a diagnosis Mm -hmm. which led us on a path towards healing and we went to a natural path and she got, you know, different tinctures she was taking while she's eating. We, we avoided certain foods, mm-hmm. you know, we had to completely eat different. And then um, about six years ago, she comes out of Sunday school class and she's eating a donut. And I said, <laughs> I said, Matea, what are you doing? She's like, well, mom, they prayed for my healing. I got to test it out. <laughs> and I was like. Okay, well, she had walked through some inner healing too at this this right. time. Uh-huh. Well, God healed her. Wow. <laughs> she she's totally fine. She's able to wow. eat all of that stuff. And you know, she's totally healed. So yeah, a diagnosis can 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 you know give us some answers. Absolutely. Um the diagnosis that I had, I had battled with something for six years, medical doctors couldn't figure it out. And then I went to a naturopathy, couldn't figure it out. I went back to medical doctors and I'm like looking online, researching myself, like there's stuff going on in my body. And finally uh-huh. I get a doctor that'll listen. Right. And, you know, because the symptoms I was having was pointing towards a diagnosis that, you know, usually you get, if you have heart disease or kidney disease or, or you've had cancer, Uh well, none of these things were relevant in my life. So they're like, well, on rare occasions, this can be a genetic, you know, defect. Well, then that gives me some fuel to go, okay, I'm going to go after some generational curses okay oh jesus jesus paid for iniquity which is generational transgressions in in our family line back to the third and fourth generation Mm -hmm. right where we can cut those things off so like alcoholism you see it run in the family yeah that doesn't have to run right The, the blood of jesus speaks a better word you now have the bloodline of christ and you can apply the blood of jesus and say from my line on Uh, no one's going to deal with alcoholism and i cut that off in the spirit realm i cut it off it's my kids aren't going to deal with it my grandkids aren't going to deal with it and i cover it in the blood of jesus Mm -hmm. and that gives you some ammunition to go after the root cause of what's going on so yes a diagnosis may give you answers yes it may give you some healing because there's peace with okay well this is what's going on but now do you want to live with that diagnosis or would you, do you want freedom? That would be the, my question Mm -hmm. for somebody who says, well, it gives me some of that. Well, there's, there's more, Jesus has more for that. Maybe it gave you some, some answers, but that doesn't mean it has to be your identity. Right. Right. So in other words, um, it, 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 it's a, it's a starting point not necessarily a landing zone like correct um, yes it, that's great and and we can use that information to continue the healing process with yes so um well i mean in like uh when we when we have a problem in our house like uh something's wrong with our plumbing and we can't find that drip we can't find that drip it's a your water bills going through the roof because you can't find the leak when you find the leak you're like hallelujah because right. i can fix the leak right yeah yeah so um and yeah it can explain a lot um i mean i think to my own life um where as I was studying um, what effect verbal and emotional abuse has on the brain, it was Mm -hmm. very enlightening. And it was enlightening to learn that a lot, that almost all of the problems that I ran into growing up in school 
were related to the verbal and emotional abuse. It had disrupted my, mm -hmm. my cognitive abilities to process um, information and um, abstract reasoning. Um, mm -hmm. But the truth is all that can be healed in the name of Jesus and had been yes. healed with the renewing of my mind. So I didn't have to stay stuck in a place where abstract reasoning was a challenge for me because mm -hmm. I had been, my mind had been renewed and restored by the blood of Jesus and by the application of his word and the filling of his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it was, it was a starting point, but not a landing pad. It was right. not where I had to live. Right. A lot of times, um, remember it goes back again to where we're spirit, soul and body. Yes. So, so, so when trauma happens, you know, like, just like what you were describing mm -hmm. because of the abusive, toxic environment that you were raised in and it caused cognitive you know, your body was responding to that, mm -hmm. to that abuse, yeah. you yeah. know, it was affecting your physical body, but yes. the blood of Jesus. Yes. Right. Covers that. Yeah. It doesn't have to stay there. Like you said, it doesn't have to stay there. No. You apply the blood of Jesus. And, and, and as Jesus takes you from glory to glory, you walked in healing from all of that. Right. Cause see, the truth is our body holds on to trauma. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we may have dealt with, okay, well, my mind, will and emotions are good. My spirit's good. I walked through some stuff. Well, we need to release it out of our bodies too. Right. And that's it's kind of an area where we, you know, I, I'm just, and honestly, just been walking through the last year and realizing, you know, I had stuff in my body I was holding. And it, so it was going through, you know, going back to, the demonic stuff. Well, I'll just give you a, for instance, I'll give you okay. what happened because I think it's important to share uh -huh. and this is going to get in the supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. Um, but guess what? We're, we're, we're more supernatural than natural. This so, is true. This is true. <laughs> um, I had gotten a call from somebody I, who I'd gone to school with back in high school uh -huh. in October. And this person had we do not keep in contact uh-huh this person somehow knew my phone number and somehow knew what was going on in my body and was uh -huh. talking about all these things going on in their own body and uh -huh. then mockingly said to me this is the stuff that's going on in your body isn't it which Whoa. i knew immediately was a demon speaking to me right there is no way this person had any natural knowledge of this because we wow. don't talk and wow. I don't talk about what's going on in my body. You know, I haven't even spoke it here. So, right. um, you know, it's something that unless you're really close to me, you don't have knowledge of this. Oh, wow. And, uh, so I was like, well, that's the enemy and yeah. that's the enemy overplaying his hand. And, you know, I called and got some prayer from our church and, and you know, cause that kind of shook me up a little bit and, uh -huh. and I realized yeah. that I needed to walk through releasing any trauma. Cause I, you know, you know, anything I partnered with this person with right. in witchcraft in drug use from the past and you know, ask my body to forgive me for taking it through those rituals and the trauma affected by it and, and ask God to apply the blood of Jesus to those areas because, you know, drugs and all those things do things to our body they and they absolutely it's holding on to that trauma. And, and, you know, it's holding on to like, you're not taking care of me. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of sounds like a weird thing, but I'll tell you what, when, when you ask your body to forgive you for that, there's so much release and apply the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. to that. There was so much release in me that I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But it's, again, it's because we are spirit, soul, and body 
that our body's holding on to a lot of stuff that maybe we've dealt with in the other two aspects of spirit and soul, but we have it in our flesh. That is, that is an excellent word. And I, and I'm really glad you brought up the supernatural element as well, because we do live in a supernatural world. We really, mm -hmm. really do. Now, Jen went on, you had asked what, what for a little more background on, on Jen's, um, diagnosis and she did provide it here so what jen says is that it's a genetic connective tissue disorder where my ligaments don't act properly regular exercise is damaging and joints are unstable including the spinal joints so it's a it's a physical issue that she is dealing with and it sounds like it's a genetic issue. Mm -hmm. uh, every ache and pain is explained. The ligaments don't do their job and stretching actually causes damage. So this is the, the, the pain point that she is dealing with. And the diagnosis for this pain point is a genetic connective tissue disorder. I almost feel like, like Jen, this, I really feel as though having a time of one-on-one -on -one prayer and, and ministry would be of great healing benefit to you, Jen. Um, I feel as though that what you're bringing, uh, what you're bringing to the light here and, and thank you for the, your, your vulnerability in sharing this. Thank you for your trust with, with us in sharing this. It sounds to me like you've been, you're relieved that you know what the source is now. And, and I can totally understand why. Because it sounds like you've tried to tried to deal with this for a very long time, and now you finally have some answers. Um, and Jen, with your permission, I would very much like to have Tammy pray with you and minister to you, if if you would be willing right now. You can mitigate future damage. Amen. Amen. Um, Tammy, I'd like to just kind of let you lead out on that. Okay. Yeah, so Lord, I just I just apply your blood, Lord. I just thank you for for Jen and her openness lord and and just her friendship because we know each other personally and uh oh lord i just apply the blood of jesus over her generational line yes <laughs> and that the blood of jesus speaks a better word and even though there was some answers there for her about what's going on that lord it doesn't have to continue this doesn't have to be the stopping point for her but Lord, we just apply your blood over that generational curse and we break that generational curse, that genetic curse, yes. because that's not the genetics of heaven. That's no. not what heaven says over you, Jen. That's not what heaven speaks over your body. That is not something that you have to partner with and accept as something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. So we apply the blood of Jesus and the truth of Jesus that by your stripes, you, by his stripes, you are healed and that you get to walk out that healing and where, where that stretching and things that are normally good for your body is causing harm. We come against that in the name of Jesus. That is yes. not the way God created your body to work. And I call your body back to the alignment that Christ paid for and the way that he created it to move and the muscles were created to stretch and be okay. And I 
curse that generational thing and I send it to a dry and inhibited place, it cannot be your future and diagnosis. And I apply the blood that speaks a better word over you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet throughout every ligament, every muscle, every part of you. I speak just a creative miracle over you in the name of Jesus that you would just begin to feel a difference and that pain would not be something that you would have to live with. And I speak to the, the neurons in your brain, those pain receptors that anticipate pain and yeah. I speak to them in the name of Jesus and I command a divine editing over the, the neuropaths of pain yeah. and say, neuropaths you have to line up with what heaven says and there's no pain in heaven so we're praying heaven to earth right now like jesus told us to and we're declaring that there's no pain and you're not going to anticipate pain but you're going to anticipate fluid movement wholeness and healing in the mighty name of jesus yes yes thank yes. you lord. lord i just stand in agreement so with this much. and lord i just keep hearing that jen you are strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. You are strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And you are a you. new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed and the new has come. You are a new creation with new DNA with divine genetic material because you are created in the image of Christ Jesus. It is no longer Jen who lives, but Christ who lives within her. And this is the truth of God's word in Jesus. Yes. Name. Yes. Yes. Praise Jesus. Yes. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And again, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen, for sharing this. And thank you for the honor of uh oh, Tammy always makes me ugly cry. <laughs> 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 those are good tears those are good tears praise god <laughs> praise god that's mm. awesome oh well tammy what's one last thought you want to leave with us here today mm. well one last thought is to get everything that jesus paid for don't settle yeah. don't settle for just mere salvation and doing the good Christian life of going to church and whatever that's, that's not what it means to be a follower of Christ. Mm. He paid for you to have fullness of life, abundant life. So, you know, the Christian life shouldn't be boring. Yeah, <laughs> It shouldn't be boring. We should have lots of God adventures all the time. And we, you know, it says, it says this in Mark 16, it says, these signs follow those who believe they cast out demons. They will heal the sick. They'll raise the dead. So if you're a believer, these signs should be following you. And if they're not, then, you know, you need to ask yourself, why are they not? And oh. maybe you need some, some, some healing. Maybe you're caught up somewhere where you're stuck. And, and for, for the power of God to flow through us, we got to clean out that down spout. Make sure there's oh. no junk in it. And allow him to clean it up so he can flow completely through us. So right. we can walk in that power and authority that Jesus paid for. So, you know, my encouragement is get everything he paid for on the cross. I love it. To be saved, to be healed, to be delivered, to know that you have power and authority, provision and protection. I love that. I love that. Oh, man. I think I'm going to make a meme to put on Breathe Life Ministries with, with that exact truth in it. Yeah. That, that is dynamic. That is an inheritance that we are not tapping into enough. 
Yeah. That is an inheritance that we need to be proclaiming yes. when we proclaim the gospel. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Powerful. Well, Tammy, you have been, as usual, an absolute delight and such a blessing to be on this um, this uh, live cast. I really, I just want to honor you and say thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, everybody just give Tammy a huge shout out and thank you. Thank you, everybody who participated in this. I just want to let you, you all know, I'm going to speak you all by name because you're such a bless, blessing. Bifna and Michelle and Joanne and Susan and Jen and Bliss and Amanda. I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for joining this podcast um, and this live cast. Thank you. Um, if you would please share this so others can gain uh, freedom through the message in this video. And uh, you all be blessed abundantly. Love you very, very much. And again, thank you, Tammy. What a blessing. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our live cast now.